Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Clayton Bagwell. I'm with the Business Operations and Support Group. And among other things, we provide account and allocation support to users and PIs. And let's see, let's get the right button here. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the different account types. Um, and basically there's two, there's user accounts and there's allocation accounts. <clears throat> so um, a user account is your personal private user account. Um, it is associated with your login or username. Um, it provides authentication, which is your personal identity and auth authorization, which is the resources you're allowed to access. Um, you start by requesting account um, for your own or your um, your principal investigator or, or project manager can send you a link to request an account. And as far as um, uh, user roles um, in in NERSC, we have things. There's about five of them. There's the principal investigator PI. Uh, there's the PI proxy, which is the person who has the authorization to um, do things for the PI. And there's some lesser known roles, which are the project membership manager and project resource manager. These are mainly used by really large projects that have a lot of people and need uh, a lot of help with managing their resources and people. And what most people have is just a standard user account. Uh, the second type of account is the project allocation account, or just a project. Um, it's like a bank account that you use to pay for your computer time and your uh, file and storage usage. Uh, it's managed by the principal investigator, or optionally, the uh, project managers. Um, all NERSC users belong to at least one project. Um, however, um, if you do belong to more than one project, you'll have one designated as your default project. Um, so you may, you're running jobs and you get charged them to the wrong project, it's probably because it went directly to your default project. Okay, a little more about user accounts. So requesting a user account, you go through our IRIS website. So it's uh, iris.nurse.gov slash add user, um, where we will collect information about um, your contact information, the organization you're with, the project you want to join, uh, and other information that DOE likes us to provide for them. Um, if uh, Also, if you have uh, previously had uh, a NERSC account and it has been deactivated for some reason, either you haven't used it in a long time or uh, you were removed uh, from all your projects at the end of the year, uh, you can get it reactivated by using uh, uh, option on this uh, add user page that I have a current NERSC account where you can enter your username and the project you want to join and that'll put you back into the system. So all new accounts and maybe some older accounts that are getting reactivated, uh, they have to complete a DOE mandated vetting process. Uh, usually it only takes a couple of days for most people, but uh, for some um, that require an extended vetting. This can take uh, longer for as, as much as a full week or more. Uh, once the vetting is completed, then the re account request will go to the principal investigator and then the PI or PI proxy must approve the account. And once that's done, then we'll notify you that your account is ready to use via email. Uh, we have a number of policies that you have to abide by. We have the uh, acceptable use policy form. Um, you'll actually see a link to that um, when you go to set your password and you have to agree to follow these um, policies. Uh, we do have specific policies for passwords. Uh, they must, you must change them at least once a year, every 365 days, and you will get email notifications when that time is coming up. Um, we don't want you to share your passwords with anyone, and we don't need to know what your password is, so don't send it to us via email. Um, it's highly insecure. Uh, your account can get locked if you've had five consecutive login failures. Um, and the easiest way to clear those failures is just to log into the IRIS website. Um, uh, if you've forgotten your password, uh, there is a link on the IRIS login page that will lead you through the process to 
uh, reset it. Uh, and if you have problems doing all that, uh, then you can always send an email to um, nurse account support for more help and we'll help you out. Um, passwords have, must register as either safe or very safe um, on the password strength meter when you're setting them up. Um, there's no character complexity rules, um, but we recommend using upper and lowercase um, letters, uh, digits, and special characters. And we've got a couple of examples of good passwords to use that are complicated and not easy to break. Um, and then, of course, there's the bad passwords that everybody knows they shouldn't be using, but some people tend to do it anyway. Um, if you are struggling to come up with a good password, uh, there's a button on, on the iris that will recommend a password for you. And we also recommend that you use a, a password vault or something to save your passwords in, particularly the, the longer, more complicated ones, because trying to type these in um, either on our websites or when trying to log into Perlmutter or one of the other systems uh, are prone to um, typos. So. Uh, another form of security that we have for access is we also require multi-factor authentication. Uh, it's the second layer of security so that uh, it's required of all users. Uh, we use what's called the soft token um, system that you can uh, link to a one-time password generator uh, software or application. And we have instructions for setting up uh, your multi-factor authentication on this link here. Um, this is fairly easy to do once you've logged into Iris the first time. Uh, you won't have to use um, multi-factor authentication because you won't have it set up yet. You can log in with just your password. Uh, there's an MFA tab that you go to, and there's a add token button on the right-hand side of the page. Uh, so if you don't see it right away, you may have to scroll over. This will generate a QR code and also give you um, uh, some other codes that uh, are required by some software to set up the token for you. So IRIS, as I've mentioned previously, that's our web-based information portal. Uh, it's used for tracking um, your uh, daily balance of uh, time that you have available. Um, use it to set up, uh, change your password, set up your pay tokens. You can change the login shell that you use when you log into Perlmutter. Uh, and you need to keep your contact information up to date. Uh, like I said, we send a lot of information to DOE, and part of that has to do with uh, uh, what organizations you're with, and, uh, your email address, and things like that. So you need to keep that up to date. Uh, PIs and their, their managers also use IRIS to manage their project membership and allocations. And there's also a number of different types of reports that users and uh, PIs are able to run. And the simple URL for IRIS is just iris.nurse.gov. This will take you to the login page. And as you can see, there's a big blue login button. That's where you start. Uh, but there's also those little links down at the bottom that will help you if you've forgotten your password uh, or your username. Um, and if you're having problems using uh, the MFA, if it's not working. So once you click on the login button, um, we have what's called the federated identity options. Uh, that's where some users can use their local um, identity to log into to nurse. Uh, but right now it's only restricted to some of the national labs, so it's not available to like majority of our users who happen to be at universities. Uh, but that's something we are still working on. Otherwise, uh, when you first log into NERSC, and then um, if you don't belong to a DOE lab, uh, you will select NERSC as the uh, institution to log in with. Okay, let's talk about allocation accounts. So. Uh, PIs apply for resources through uh, the process called ERCAP, the Energy Research Computing Allocation Process. It's accessed through our help desk system uh, and can be reached at ERCAP.nurse.gov. It's used to renew current projects annually, uh, which is typically 
late summer, August, September timeframe. And also to, um, uh, we can submit ERCAP requests anytime throughout the year. If you've received a, a, a DOE grant or something and uh, you want your own computing allocation. Uh, we collect a number of, a lot of information that the DOE requires to review the um, application process. Um, things like science objectives and approach, the resources required, such as the computing time and either CPU node hours or GPU node hours, or both. And also the types of storage that you need for a community file system and the HPSS archive system. Um, as Helen said, 80% of our computing time is all allocated by uh, the EOE Office of Science. Um, so all, almost all our cap requests are reviewed by um, the science, DOE Office of Science program um, managers. And then uh, for the renewal process that we have, uh, we always ask uh, people to renew their projects for the coming year. And those don't get um, awarded until late fall, usually around December. And then our allocation year starts in January. Uh, like I said, small exploratory allocations are awarded throughout the year, um, and those are reviewed by uh, DOE program managers. So even though we have large machines and they can do a lot of stuff, we're still limited on the number of computing hours that we can provide to our over 1,000 projects and 10,000 users. If our um, allocation year 2024, we have over 22 million uh, CPU node hours and 12 million GPU node hours. And uh, as Helen said, 80% uh, goes to uh, DOE, uh, the DOE mission science uh, allocations. 10% uh, are set aside specifically for the uh, ALCC, Oscar Leadership Computing Challenge. And 10% for our special directors reserve, which supports like the exploratory, the small allocations for exploratory projects, uh, education and staff use. Uh, here's a little pie chart of how the time was distributed for uh, 2024 to the different programs. Um, that might help you um, size the requests that you make for the amount of time that you ask for. Uh, we don't put a limit on how much time you can ask for, but we do warn you if you're asking for more than 10% of a program's total allocation, because then you might getting, be getting into an unreasonable area for how much you can uh, uh, get awarded. <laughs> and here's a little parts pie chart for the GPU time that was distributed. Um, and we also want to check to make sure that if you are uh, requesting GPU time, that your applications um, and software that you're using are installed on Promutter and that uh, we have a, a known GPU version available for you to use. So uh, typically DOE gets requests for about three times the amount of time that's available to each program. So they're very strict on how, how much they can uh, uh, award to each project request. Um, and a project can either run out of time or a user can run out of time. So the, the PI will determine how much of a project's total uh, allocation award each user will have, either as a, a percent of the total allocation or a fixed number of hours. So if you have run your jobs and you uh, try to submit a job and says you don't have enough time, uh, you need to check to see if you run out of how much time you've been allowed to use. Um, and you'll have to contact your PI uh, to get more time to use. Um, we also have what's called the overrun queue. Um, that's if a project has totally run out of time, well, some jobs can run there, but on a very low priority and uh, they don't get charged for those jobs. So if the project runs out of time, the, the POE is gonna have, the POE, I'm sorry, the PI is going to have to um, contact the DOE uh, to their Office of Science program allocation manager and request additional time from them. Uh, typically, uh, the 
the DOE program managers will try to hold back some time in order to accommodate new projects that come in or projects that have uh, uh, run out of time and can show that they need extra time to finish the research they're doing. Uh, and again, uh, while this process is being uh, sussed out, uh, you can submit jobs to the overrun queue and, and try and get through that way. So here's a big, long, confusing list of all the different uh, help resources um, that you can find information on. Uh, we have our main website, uh, www.nurse.gov, which has information about accounts and allocations. Um, but a lot of it, we also have the docs.nurse.gov, our documentation pages, where you can find out about um, uh, federated ID and MFA and, and that kind of stuff. And of course, the main uh, information portal, IRIS, and the RCAP for allocations. Uh, if you have questions or problems, you can reach us one of two ways either going to the help desk, uh, help.nurse.gov, to submit a trouble ticket, or you can email to accounts at nurse.gov for problems with your account if you can't get logged into the help desk. And the same for allocations, allocations at nurse.gov if you have problems with. Um, the ERCAP or the uh, any other allocation uh, problems. And that should be it. Uh, anybody?